Hello operators! But so many new owners of these, I thought I'd take a minute to talk about holster selection. It's important because the only defensive is the one you can touch holsters. Most important thing to me is comfort. Because if it's not comfortable, guess what? I'm probably not going to carry. And I'm always carrying. ABC, always be carrying. Comfort number one, and the ability to conceal that holster. Because you don't want anybody knowing you have a firearm until it's too late for them to know that you have a firearm. Comfort, concealability, retention, the ability for the holster to keep the weapon in place until you need it as you go about your day-to-day -day activities. 80% of people carry weapons around their waist. That's why police have them hold up their shirt, turn around looking for those weapons. John Bianchi, who sold his line to Safari Land, was an expert and a genius on alternate means of carrying holsters. Now, Safari Land still carries a number of his offerings. Uh, you can still find some of those original holsters. I have some that are 30 some years old that still work. Uh, through vintage gun leather today. Now some of you bought some obscure guns in this trying time and you might have a hard time finding a holster for it. You need to take the time. If you're fortunate enough to have a police supply store in your town, I'd visit them. Holsters are like bras for ladies and underwear for men. You're going to have to try a few. You're going to spend some money. I think I've spent enough on Safari Land to buy a summer home. But Safari Land makes my favorite holster. But it's a duty holster. I can't hide it. Guess what? I'm not in uniform anymore, as you can tell. So, what do I have to do? I've switched up. I like all kind of holsters. I like straight draw. I like cross draw. I like ankle holsters. I even like shoulder holsters. Yeah, I said it. I like cross draw holsters. I carry more than one of these. I hope you do too. But please, get a good holster. Try to find somebody who teaches weapon retention. Hard to do these days because it's not a fun topic because you leave the class sore. You realize how out of shape you are when you dig a weapons retention class, but it's important because every encounter you have from now on involves what? It involves a firearm, dangerous weapon, in the wrong hands. You don't want it to get out of your hands into somebody else's hands. Find a weapons retention instructor. I'd even go so far as to contact your local police academy, get a group of friends together and see if you can't hire a weapons retention instructor to come teach you. We're going to add in some pictures here of John Bianchi wearing every model holster he ever made. I like that. So think outside the box. Comfort so you can wear it all day. You know what? You're going to buy more than the holster. i got to tell you that right now. A holster designed for your specific gun. Not one of these nylon universal holsters because you're going to find out that one, you've dropped your gun, you've damaged it, you've embarrassed yourself, you might even get shot by your own gun to say that. So you're going to buy a holster, you're going to wear the holster, and we're going to add some things on in the next couple talks. We're going to talk about first aid, spare ammunition. No such thing as spare ammunition. I've never met anybody, and neither is Clint Smith, who said after a gunfight, you know, I had way too much ammunition, but it doesn't happen. So we're going to talk about medical kits, tourniquets, ways to carry spare ammunition, how much to carry. It's a personal choice, but we are going to talk about that. Love you. Know that whether you're tier one, tier none, you're welcome here to join in this tier fun.